My name is Jill Dittbenner and um, this is some of the art that I've done in Manchester. So I'm going to talk about it for um, any students that I might be doing a project with or anyone who's just interested in seeing my art. So this one is right near the uh, city library here. So um, when I make a mural I try to think about, you know, the area that it's in so that I'll know my audience and what uh, fits with what they might be doing in this area. So inside this old telephone box I have some um, representations of little favorite books of mine. So I have Stephen King, I have Anne Frank, Harriet the Spy, The Hobbit, Amelia Bedelia, The Little Prince, Jaws, and Charlotte's Web. So a lot of them are kids books and I tried to have you know just a variety. Um, and then around the box I just did images of people reading to go along with the library theme and so that's the library telephone box and um, one other thing with this box it was the old-fashioned telephone book holder so when I make a design I think about all the different surfaces that you can paint and so I painted um, the library on the outside of this and then I don't know if you guys can see it from where you are the library on the inside so thanks for stopping at this first stop on our tour. Okay, everybody, uh, this is a second stop on our mural tour. So we're over here on Chestnut Street is behind us, but we don't need that in the video. And this mural is one of the bigger projects that I've done in Manchester, particularly. Um, it was challenging because there's some obstacles in the way here that even though I have a lift that can reach the wall and high places on the wall, there's uh, barriers to getting close to the wall with that lift. So just kind of things that you have to think about when you're doing a project, you know, what is the place that you're in like? Um, so this place is called Forever Emma. It's a little theater. Um, they kind of like practice theater things here. And so I wanted to include kind of images from plays that they did in this theater. Um, and also I wanted to incorporate the colors of their logo. So they have a pink, blue kind of logo theme going. So I have pink, blues, and purples going on here. And I think I did do the logo near the top of the mural. Um, and then I also, be beyond just like these giant people, um, doing plays, I tried to include some of the scenery or backdrops that you would use in a play as the backdrop of the mural. Uh, one of the challenges of this wall, if you come close, you'll see the bricks. The bricks are really textured, so trying to get the paint to adhere to these bricks was difficult. It's a really rough surface to work on. Um, so in my next project for this building, I'm doing it on panels, just like the ones we're going to be doing with the sharks, because um, that'll allow me to get more detailed with my painting um, and also just give a different, um, maybe a different style to what's happening. Um, and we also wanted to highlight this girl in the spotlight. Um, she was one of the members of the theater group and uh, really loved participating in theater but died young and so we just wanted to have kind of a tribute to her and kids like her who just love being part of theater. Along the bottom of the mural I included some quotes from plays, uh, quotes that encourage you to be, you know, getting on the stage and sharing your love of theater. So we'll maybe just show you the scene. kind of a funny little story. Sometimes I invite people to help me out with my murals, um, people who want to paint or whatever. So 
this one girl came and helped me paint. So I painted all of this and she painted this. So that was pretty funny. Um, but it's fun to have other people participate, you know, to share in the art and get maybe just a little different viewpoint. Um, I don't know what else to say about this one. This is our third stop on the mural tour. So this is like the first really big mural that I did in Manchester. It is on the Rex Theater, which used to be a movie theater. So when I was uh, planning for this one, I actually applied for a call for art and the design that I submitted was much smaller because I thought I was going to be painting on a different wall. And so I ended up having to like, take my little design and make it long and skinny. This is also um, a mural that I did without a lift, so I ended up using ladders for the whole thing, so that's why it only goes to the height that you can reach with a ladder, a tall ladder, 20 feet, I think, um, which can be a little scary if you're not used to working on ladders. So running through the whole mural, I have like a film strip of different favorite movies. So we have King Kong here, Audrey Hepburn up there, and um, maybe even Lone Ranger. Wizard of Oz is over there somewhere, all kinds of different movie references. Also, another thing that we learned while we were painting this mural is uh, if you put a sign on your mural, like the Rex Theater, then you would have to pay your city a little bit extra because it's a sign. So I painted out the sign that we originally were going to put, and I put like a little movie guy with the Rex Theater on his name tag, which is like a little inside reference. Um, and then in, this is the first mural where I tried doing the dual, like, black and white for the past and color for the present uh, future. So we have all these people going to the theater today and then kind of what might have been happening in this area in the past with row houses up top and an old uh, representation of what the Rex Theater used to look like. So this is kind of a different project and also this project I worked with a lot of different people. So. I gave them credit over here in my group. We called it the Manchester Wallflowers. Um, another thing I do when I'm uh, for my mural projects is I walk around all the time and make sure that they don't have damage or graffiti on them. So like I notice right here, this number is not part of the mural. So I'll probably come back and paint red paint on it because I don't want someone changing my art to whatever they want kind of like lets people know, hey, somebody cares about this piece of art and is watching. So if you want to make a mess, do it somewhere else. Um, I guess this is a good mural for you to be thinking about how much space you have on your shark, for example, to fill that space with whatever the information is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, because if you don't plan for the space, then you end up not to cover it. So just things to think about as you're making a design. Thanks for stopping here at the Rex. So this is a, a mural right next to the one that we were just looking, stop number four on our tour. It's a mural that goes with that second mural that we looked at. As you can see it has the pinks, blues, and purples of the Palace Youth Theater where we were at Forever Emma. Um, they decided they wanted to have a mural closer to where the theater di district is in Manchester. So they uh, commissioned me to do a second mural with the same kind of coloring, but I didn't want to do exactly the same thing. So I came up with kind of a theme of kids playing outside and I have these dandelions and then in the, uh, in some of the dandelions or just in the scene, I have these smaller scenes of what theater productions they might have done over here. So we have Charlotte's Web, The Wizard of Oz, Squirrel Girl, and then some of the smaller scenes I have Matilda, Susicle, and uh, 
I think Clue up there, and Frozen, of course, Cinderella. So again, uh, when I was painting this mural, someone came and graffitied that area over there, but I immediately fixed it, and since the, it's been years now, a couple years, no more graffiti. So I think just letting people know, hey, I care about my art, and I am going to fix it if you do something to it, then people get the message, like, oh, I can make my mess somewhere else. Um, and again, I've utilized the black and white theme here because it's right next to that first mural that I did in miniatures to the big one. And so I wanted to kind of have some continuity. Um, so I had the black and white scenes in this one. And I also made my people colored similarly to that first mural. So they actually have skin color versus um, that mural I showed you over on Chestnut Street where the people are pink and purple and blue. It's a little bit different. So just trying to like link them together in some way. Thanks for stopping at this place on the tour. You like, do I record that? No, I'm trying to figure out why it doesn't. Yeah. Just... All right, hi guys. Uh, again, we're on the same building. This is also the Rex Theater. This is the back side, which is the side I thought I was going to paint originally, so that's what I was designing for. Um, so to give you an idea of perspective, it's also a very big mural, um, giant some might say, and I painted this one with very limited color scheme, so I used red, blue, yellow, the primary colors, um, and maybe there's a little bit of purple and pink mixed in, but mostly red, blue, and yellow. Uh, so I call this like the primary colors band. A few of the people in the band are people that I know in real life and then a few of them are kind of conglomerations of what I wanted to accomplish. So like the, uh, the guitarist over here is my friend Paul Nelson. He plays music in Manchester and he's like a singer-songwriter that I really like to listen to. I also have my friend Ali Beaudry on the end. Um, she plays the ukulele and then um, the saxophone player is also someone I know, not as well. James not David Morey. But uh, the whole band, I just wanted to have a variety of instruments and kind of, you know, this is what the Rex Theater is now. It's a venue for musicians to uh, play their music or comedians to come. So it's more of like a today for the Rex Theater. Um, and they, they really wanted to have a sign. So they said, go ahead and paint the name of the theater there and we'll pay for the sign or whatever it is so that was great um, this the challenge for this mural was like wow it's so tall and like I have this design that I want to put on this wall but I I can't really project the picture onto the wall because the brick makes it hard to see whatever you projected and also just to get that just right uh, with your lift in the way um, so I ended up designing it and then kind of using my mathematical reasoning and visual idea to kind of make it work. So I'd be up on the lift, try to draw a giant head, then come down here and look at it from far away to decide like, is that the right? So there was a couple things I repainted to make them fit better, but um, in general, it worked, I think, um, pretty happy with the result of this one. So thanks for stopping at this place on the Rex Theater. We'll go to one little thing on the wall around the corner. Hey everybody. I've got um, this little project right here. So while I was painting the back of the theater, um, someone had graffitied this doorway. So the owner said, hey, can you just go over and paint something on the door so that it's not graffitied anymore? And I was like, sure thing. And because this is called the Rex Theater, I was like, would you be offended if I did a T-Rex? Because it just would be kind of a funny inside joke. And so that's why there's a T-Rex here. Um, and then this wall over here, you can see there is graffiti on it now. And this will be, a future project so I, I look forward to coming and fixing this maybe with a giant dinosaur mural or something like that um, so thanks for coming by to the door welcome to Cat Alley this is a, a Manchester icon I think it's the only thing that's on like some uh, I forget the name of the website but there's a website that has all these cool places that you should visit and this is uh, Atlas Obscura I, I believe it is this is the place in Manchester that's linked on that site. So there's a bunch of little murals and these are all people that helped with the murals. Um, so there's 
about 20 different artists that have contributed to Cat Alley this time around. It was here before, but it had a lot of graffiti and damage to it, so they just decided to give it a little facelift. So this cat stack down here are the cats that I made. Um, it was really fun to be part of this project because I remember always coming to Cat Alley and like choosing my favorite cats to get my picture with, and like now I'm part of this icon of Manchester, so that's really cool. Uh, I'll show you the whole wall because it's a lot. Um, this artist has a lot of cool stuff she does for Trader Joe's with lettering, so it was fun to see her working. Um, and get to know like different styles of art. This is one of the original cats. So Cupcake Cat was here before and I think she just uh, revamped it a little bit. We've got cats over here with mushrooms. Uh, this cat is I still uh, maybe still in process. Um, it's from one of the students at the art school down the street. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Dancing Cat maybe, I'm not sure what that one's called. And cats are liquid because cats are really cool, cool creatures. And um, cats playing with fish. And then I'll call your attention to these ones down here. Coffee Cat is one of the original art designs. So that one's pretty cool that it's still here. It was always one of my favorites. And Pandora Mill Cat, also one of the originals. Um, Manchester was a big mill town. You probably have learned about the mills in one of your classes. So that's a neat one. And you can see just there's all variety of cats here. Pretty fun. Uh, space cat, and crazy cats, cats dancing by the fire, and this is Nosferatu, which is like a vampire cat, and then cartoony cat and roller derby cats. So, Cat Alley, you guys, if you come to Manchester, this is definitely a place that you would want to stop. Uh, hi everyone, so this is um, another form of art kind of that I have been doing in Manchester. It's the Think Outside the Box challenge so we paint electric boxes to make them more exciting in the cityscape. Um, one of the things that made me want to paint murals is the whale wall that was in Portsmouth for a long time. It, it was just this giant wall with two whales swimming through it. So um, this is kind of a tribute to that mural. Uh, I have all these water creatures. So I have on this side some seals. Over here we got some otters. And on this side, there's the whales. Um, and like I was telling you before, I always paint all the different surfaces. So even all this weird stuff on the side has art on it. There's a lobster and some snails. The top of this box, which most people could not see, has seagulls on it. And then um, you guys are gonna be painting sharks, but this also has some rays. So I try to just think about what are all the different cool sea creatures. It's like a little uh, aquarium in Manchester. Uh, thanks for stopping here. Here's another stop on our mural tour. I have lost track of how many stops we've had now, so who cares? This is uh, another telephone box. So I used to have four telephones in Manchester. Now I have three, uh, but this was the first telephone that I painted. Um, and it's the one that I've had the most trouble with in terms of graffiti or uh, whatever you call it, vandalism, I guess. So inside I have painted some figures playing music. I've got an accordion player after my grandfather. And then on this side, there's a cello player. And over here, there's a tuba player. You won't really see tuba players on the street typically, but these are street musicians um, sharing their craft with the world. And then I did like a big apartment building with the stem. Um, it was a fun project to do, but originally we had plans for a plexiglass cover right here and there was some people that I made over at Studio 550 out of uh, clay that I had put inside as kind of like an installation of sculpture. Um, and so the first time we tried it, someone broke the plexiglass and stole the people. So then we made new people out of wood, 
put new plexiglass. Uh, it lasted for a few weeks and then they broke the plexiglass again and took the people. So I decided to just leave it open and paint the people inside. Um, but this is another example of needing to think about the location. Across the street, we have a big arena where events happen. So there's always a lot of people in this area, but there's also quite a few bars just to the right of here, bars where people might be imbibing and um, they come out a little rowdy sometimes. So I think that it's a little bit more durable piece of art now that it doesn't have that plexiglass cover. Um, the one over by the library that we looked at, you know, has never been touched um, for in terms of graffiti. So I don't, it's it just something to think about when you install public art. And that brings me to the question of like, why do we make public art? So one reason is because you want to beautify your city landscape. You know, like this area, if you look around here, it is a little bit drab and this is just a little window into the artistic sense and um, it's a little whimsical. So people who want to interact with art, it's here and it's art is for everyone. So it's kind of neat. Um, and, There used to be a little tag that said who sponsored this art project, but I don't see the tag today. Um, so maybe that's another uh, another victim to the graffiti that ha has happened to this box. But um, Studio 550 that I mentioned earlier, it's right over there. And it is a pottery studio. So I went there for art classes, made some pottery, and then um, I wanted to like share my art with other people. So I brought it here, right next to Studio 550, kind of like a little advertisement for them. Like, hey, here's a place where you can make pottery. Anyway, that's another reason for public art to kind of call your attention to a feature of the area. So thanks for stopping by. All right, you guys, we've walked down to the factory. It's a old factory. Like I told you, Manchester was a mill town. And um, now it's, apartments and airbnbs and things and they have this parking area right here for food trucks so on these parking barriers i painted various food truck scenes again i played with the coloring of the people because i like uh just kind of change how people see each other we don't all have to be the same color we can be who we are right not that we're purple but um so I just made different food trucks, uh, kind of generic. None of them are based on anything real. And then some of the scenes have people in them, and some don't. Um, you can tell I'm a little out of breath because it was a good mile walk down here. But this one is my favorite one because it has these bicyclists in it. Now the factory is also kind of a cool location for me to point out to you. Um, they have an event space inside and they also have like an artist in residence program. So if you decide you want to become an artist, you could apply for places like this. Uh, you come and create a body of work and then you leave a piece of it behind everywhere you go. Um, I'm not an artist in residence at the factory, but I do have art here. So thanks for stopping on this place on the tour. Uh, welcome to this other electric box. This is my second electric box in Manchester. So remember I was talking about, think about your audience and your location. On this guy's shirt, I have some bicycles because the bike barn used to be right over there. So that's why I put bikes on it. Um, also, this person used to have a name tag. Um, looks like someone scraped it off, maybe. So a woman named Tammy woke, walked by one day and was like, Oh, you should put me in your mural. So I put her name on the name tag. But it's missing for some reason. Checking out the art. Uh, I tried to cover every surface with lots of detail because this is another, it's an example of like trying to avoid graffiti artists ruining your art if all the surfaces. If all the surfaces are important, then there isn't this empty space for them to do graffiti. Uh, this is me on the corner right here. Um, so I have guitars on my shirt because I like playing music. You can see this the hat. This is my friend Carmen. We often walk around town together and I gave her uh, this subway map on 
her shirt because she has a shirt just like that of Middle Earth. And if you come around this side, you can just see the rest of it. So I've really taken a lot. This was the uh, first little project that I did in Fantastica. So it's think, think Outside the Box. Another Think Outside the Box one. Coincidentally, this man has little sharks on his shirt. And then, you know, so it's just kind of a fun representation of people eating at diners. Kind of the way I came up with this theme is my niece and I, she's 13, so your age. She likes walking around town with me and her favorite restaurant is the Red Arrow. So I was thinking like, hey, the pandemic is, is uh, going on and this helps us remember what it's like to get together and how important it is to talk to each other. Guys, one more stop on the mural tour. This is Oris. Organization for Immigrant and Refugee Success. So I did a farmer's market mural. You can see there's tons of detail and people in this mural. Um, under this tent over here, I have like the, uh, the founding members of Oris and Erica who actually helped us get this project. So there you go. Um, and then I just, there's a lot of different people coming to this farmer's market you can see I've worked hard at creating um, a variety of people. Down here we have this little girl, she was uh, visiting the mural one day and her mom was teasing her that she was in the mural so we said oh we'll put you in the mural. So there you go, we took a picture of her, painted her right in, right down to the pink and blue shoes she was wearing in the American flag shirt. Over here where we signed our names, a couple little kitties hanging out and, and there's also a few dogs in this mural. Um, where's the dog? There it is. Some chickens. There was some little chicks on the ground here, but they've started wearing off because um, there's a lot more uh, activity happening. But, you know, this is another location of an upcoming project. I'll be painting a mural on the inside, a map of New Hampshire with locations of uh, places that are connected to this farm um, conglomerate, I guess you would say. Also, uh, I'm pretty proud of the back background of this mural. It looks like there are tons of little tents and people part of the farmer's market. So there you go. Um, and also lots of ages and variety of people. So thanks for coming on this mural tour with me today. I enjoyed talking to you about my art and um, I hope you enjoyed looking at it. Hey guys, I thought I was done the mural tour, but then I remembered of this mural. So this is the hands mural and I did this as a collaborative project with a couple students from New Hampshire Art Institute. Um, well, I think they were graduated when we did this and we also did it in conjunction with FOA, Friends of Art. So you can see uh, we had to work together to come up with our idea and how we could collaborate. I love the colors of this mural. Um, and just it's like a it's hard for me to do a non-representational mural so this one is a little bit more i guess uh fantastical um you can see like everything in it is realistic but it's not really something you would see in real life so i like how we painted the hands with all the different colors um see the brush strokes if i come up closer this little hawk was my idea and actually uh I was just over by the Red Arrow and saw a hawk, so that was pretty cool. The mountain um, is a hand, so that's pretty neat. And they're all kind of reaching in. Uh, one of the things that we had to think about with this mural is like making sure the hands weren't doing anything that could be construed as like a gang sign. So hopefully we did a good job of that. Uh, but thanks for visiting the hands mural and all the art today.